G'day there, podcaster. Ben here, giving you a heads up on what's to come in this pod. Um, mm. Liam, you've jumbled the order around a little bit from what happened live. Yeah, uh, yeah, I did. Um, Which is fine. Because normally the show starts stronger and gets shitter. Today it started <laughs> shitter and got stronger. But so, in this podcast, it will be stronger to shitter. Yep. The only reason, in my opinion. Yep. The only reason I ask is because I'm not too sure what did you put first. I actually put Bell's bit first. Whoa. So it's bloody gold star for you. Oh, well done, hey, Bell. Thank you. Bell. What goes last? What goes last, yeah. <laughs> what ruined the friendship? Which was uh-huh. also Bell's bit. So demoted again. You lose that star. <laughs> Highs and lows, hey? Rude. <laughs> Enjoy. Live across Australia, this is Ben Liam and Bell's Late Drive. On Nova. 13, 24, 10. How'd they tell you you were getting fat? My phone lit up earlier, just about an hour ago, and it said, it was a text, and it said, Welcome to the eight week challenge. It was a text from my gym. And I was like, I didn't sign up to this. I didn't sign up for the eight-week challenge. So I texted my partner, Christian, who is a coach there. And I said, did you sign me up for the eight-week challenge? And he went, yep. Oh, no. I was like, excuse me? <laughs> <laughs> and he replied, well, yeah, healthy habits. I'm like, okay, you have to weigh yourself at the start, weigh yourself at the end. There's like counting calories. You've got little like challenges, like limit alcohol. It's it's very intense. You have to count your steps every day. It's all about shedding. 13, 24, 10, how'd they tell you you were getting fat? <laughs> I had a I had a plump couple of years there and I remember we were, it was the end of the year once and we were um, getting our photos done that we do for like the, the marketing and that sort of stuff. And someone said to me, they were like, yeah, good. Yeah, Ben, you got that like shirt, like Bell this. And they said, Liam, um, we're black. It's slimming. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, Aww. do we all wear black then? Or is it? No, no, just me. Just me. I'll, I'll just be, I'll be wearing the black just to confirm. Yep. Okay, cool. All right. Nice. 13, 24, 10 is our number here at Nova. How'd they tell you you were getting fat? Our favorite call up will walk away with tickets to go see Amy Shark. Cyril right now stumbling in. A bit like Liam to that photo shoot. <laughs> <laughs> I've been signed up to the eight-week challenge at my gym by my partner. Didn't know that was happening. Vicky <laughs> in Melbourne, how did they tell you you were getting fat? I actually paid for them to tell me I was fat. What do you, what you mean? mean? Well, I ended up going to my doctor. They thought I, I had a thyroid issue, um, and they sent me to a specialist, which charged me $280, and eventually she said to me, do you know, it's a good idea if you just sort of have shakes in the morning, shakes at lunch, and a piece of, you know, steak or chicken and salad in the evening. It's not thyroid. You just need to lose weight. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> I guess they're coming from a doctor, though, that, like, that is probably, that's the person you want to tell you, I guess. It's true. It's like, yeah, you can't be like, oh, you bitch, and slap them. Like, you know, yeah. it's like they're, just, they're looking out for you. Yeah, you might not you know? want to hear it. Yeah, but, you know, that's probably the best person to hear it from. Yep. Uh, still pretty expensive, though. Uh, Larissa in Campbelltown, how'd they tell you you were getting a bit fat? Hi, I'm a high school teacher, so when I went to one skirt in particular, a couple of kids have um, commented, but recently a year seven little girl when I wore this one tight skirt, asked me if I was pregnant. Oh. And I thought, oh, I couldn't wear this skirt again. <laughs> yeah. And did you, like, make the kid feel real bad or were you, did you just sort of have to play it off like, oh, no, well, I've recently had a child. Well, I'm back on mat leave, so I was like, "Oh no, I've had, I've had the kids. Now I'm done." <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if, like, you, you can, as a kid, you can shrug that off and yeah. pretend that didn't happen, or are you still like mortified? I don't think the kids have got feelings. Like, I don't think they care. Okay, whoa! <laughs> I don't think they care. Strong remark from Ben. Kids but I think don't if the kids feelings. said that, and then they, I don't think kids go, "Oh no, and now I feel bad." I yeah, don't think they feel bad. They're just like, "Well, you know, probably shouldn't wear the, the dress, Miss Larissa." <laughs> Ah, uh, Kelly, what about you? Um, I work in an aged care home and our activities team thought it would be great to have a Biggest Loser competition for the star. <laughs> for the star. Yep. <laughs> and she she yelled across the reception, hey, Kelly, we're running the Biggest Loser competition. Do you want to join? <laughs> <laughs> I'm good, thanks, mate. <laughs> No, no. <laughs> just try to get through my shift. Thanks for that one. Yep. Kelly, no, I insist. I insist you join. You'd be great. You'd be awesome. <laughs> you win a voucher for bowling at the end if you lose the most. <laughs> You're on over. Have you seen this story in Manly? These elderly residents have taken it upon themselves uh, to police the area and stop locals from weighing on trees. 
after <laughs> big nights at the pub. They, they, they literally have started like a piss patrol. Cause really? they're, yeah, it's. I suppose the older you get, the the little things like bother you in life. Like I would, if someone's waiting on a tree, I'm like, that's just nature. That's we've been doing that for hundreds of years. Mm-hmm. You know? right, the, the area that I live in, every morning I get up and there's just there's new puddles everywhere. But yeah, it's okay. And it's look, it's different. Yeah, when you live above a shopping centre like you do, Bell, yeah. and it's just like on the concrete because you do smell a bit more. But I think like around the beach and stuff, like whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, but it actually sounds like a great new hit television series. I could imagine like Channel 7 picking it up. Piss cops, piss cops, they'll come for you. Come for you if you don't use the loop. Piss cops. It's 11pm on the glitzy seaside suburb of Manly. Graham and Judy are on a stakeout to catch local piss bandits strolling out of the pub. Yeah, we come here most nights. Uh, We've got a zero tolerance to piss in the northern beaches. If we see a perp, we'll chase them down and citizens arrest them. Are you sure you don't want any of my tuna rissole, Judy? No, Graham, and you shouldn't be either. You know you get indigestion when you eat late. And, Graham, lay off the prune juice. It helps me swallow my multivitamins. Oh, there's a tree. Graham, Graham, look! What? What is it? We have movement! Go, go! Oh, that's good. Right, you! What? Come back here! Huh? Give me a minute, I'll be there in a minute. Oi! Mate, get off Stop of me. Stop what you're doing! Get off, you old concept. Stop pissing! Hey, I had a big night at the pub. I'm just trying to take a piss. Will you uh, get off of me? Uh, hold still, will you? This is a citizen's arrest. Oh. Oh, no. Did you just piss your pants? I have incontinence. Next week on Piss Cops. Graham, look, there's a dog pissing. Not on my watch. (coughs) Piss Cops. Do we think the Australian accent is sexy? No. I think it's sexy. Do you, though? Yeah, I think so. It don't, doesn't the world think that the Australian accent's sexy? Oh, because the, because people overseas think like Heath Ledger, Chris Hemsworth, Liam oh, Hemsworth. Oh, you know what? Nah, I, I, you know, there's probably some countries that think it's okay. But I suppose if you're just in Australia, speaking to other Australians, you're like, it's not that sexy. I mean, Chris Hemsworth doesn't think so. He was doing um, some promoting for the new Mad Max Furiosa film with Anya Taylor-Joy. This is what he had to say about it. Australian is definitely not a sexy accent. How you going, babe? No, but I think... Give us, give us a kiss, honey. Oh, Lord. You're hot. Oh, You're Lord. So hot. So, I was just saying, uh, yeah. So sexy. <laughs> I mean, he's not wrong. Yeah, but I mean, listen to... The, I'll play the very first mm. bit of that. Listen to his voice before he starts doing the fake accent. Australian is definitely not a sexy accent. Australian is definitely not Yeah, but I mean, he's got a deep voice. <laughs> yeah, Do you know it's what I mean? Australian. He's like, you yeah, bloody talking like this. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Everyone sounds a little bit sexy when they're talking like Chris Hemsworth. Yeah. Yeah. You know what? Ben's got a point because if you listen to like Eric Banner talk, mm. that's sexy. Mm-hmm. But if you hear someone be like, oh, yeah, nah, come here, Sheila, yeah. then no, yeah, of course yeah. not. It's, it's nice like when you talk like that, man, yeah. <laughs> I think we can all it's agree. It's <laughs> I th- it doesn't sound like I think we can all agree that accents, whether they're sexy or not, is subjective to the specific person. Mm. What I would love to do, 13, 24, 10, give us a buzz if you've got an accent and we can decide as a group whether or not it's sexy. Uh, Rob in Melbourne, hello. Hey, guys. What's going on? How are we? Uh, it's an Irish oh. accent. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, okay. And yeah. Do, do, do people often tell you it's a bit of a sexy accent or...? Uh, I think it gets a little bit of a mixed reaction. Some people are very fond of it, others don't think it's that great. But yeah, a bit of a mixed bag. Um, I think it's pretty hot, to be honest. So I'm very fond of my own accent. I, I, Rob, I think it's endearing. I don't think it's sexy. Uh, rude. Uh, oh, yeah. No, it's... Well, it's... well, that's okay, Belle. What do you think? Sure, <laughs> sure, it is, sure yeah, fair question. is doing it for you. Uh, yeah, no, look, absolutely. It's It's... It's both cute and sexy. There you go, it's, Rob. It's very like I want to squish your cheeks, but you know we also want to go in the cheeks. I don't know. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry, Rob. That Belle said she wants to go in your butt. Um, I think that's kind of what she was getting at. I'm so sorry. We don't normally do that with callers. Um, she's obviously just feeling a little crazy because it's getting close to 7:30 p.m. That's what the Irish accent does. I'm so sorry. That's the first time any one of us on the show has ever yeah. said that. And, so uh, there you go, Belle. Yeah, gold so stuff. Yep. All right. Well, um, don't complain about that, Rob. Yeah, that's <laughs> it. We're, we're, all, we're all happy with that. Yeah, Rob, that was nothing out of line there. 
That's all right. I'm ready for anything. <laughs> oh, wow. Rob sounds like he's actually kind of keen on that sort of arrangement there. Okay. So sorry. <laughs> That's a wild thing to say. Um, Rob, appreciate you coming on. 13, 24, 10. If you have got an accent, give us a buzz. I promise Belle will be kind Mm -hmm. and we can tell you if it's sexy or not. Brand new music from Deanie Boy, Dean Lewis, All I Ever Wanted. Is that the name of his new album, D-Boy? No, it's Deanie Boy, I call him. Oh, right. You call him D-Boy. You should know you play a lot of uh, PlayStation with him. Not Dean Lewis. (laughs) No? No, you're thinking of Rule. Yeah, that's right. Different guy. Oh, I thought that you played with Dean Lewis a little bit. No, nah, I played with Ely a little bit. Another guy, another Australian musician. Do you remember when? Sorry, I'll get. We'll get, we'll get <laughs> oh, to what we we're doing. We'll get to what we're doing in just one second. But I have to say this. Do you remember uh, a couple of years ago? Yep. He used to comment on all that stuff. Yeah, and we went for a beer with him one time. You, we did. You, me, Dean Lewis in yeah. Newtown somewhere. Yeah, in because Sydney. he because yeah. he kept commenting on our videos every time. It didn't matter. <laughs> When we posted, yeah. he was the first person to comment. He commented before anybody else that followed our, followed our page. He must have lived on. It was the like ground. he was a bot. It was like he was a bot. <laughs> no, he was. Uh, Dean Lewis was your dance mum. Like yeah, he, he was like go guys. The wheel. He yeah. was like yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, that's great. Good anyway, times. um, right now we are going around the world. Yes, Chris Hemsworth has said that he doesn't think the Australian accent is sexy. Now, we agree, disagree, so we thought 13, 20, 14, give us a buzz if you've got an accent and we can discuss whether or not it's sexy. Uh, Valerie joins us now. Hello, Valerie. Hello, guys. How are you? Good. I'm not detecting an accent just yet. Uh, it might be because it's fading away a little bit, but I don't know. Oh. Sometimes mm. when I say car or water, Is that UK? Like that. Is that UK? No. I, yeah, are we, Car. is it South African maybe? Yes. Ah. Yeah, it's very, mm. it's very light. You know, I'm used mm. to like the spring bok, like talking like this district man. <laughs> but, you, you know, you're not really, yeah, it's it's very, it's like a light. Not, yeah. yeah. Valerie, I take it you've been in Australia for a while. Can you slip into a really heavy version of it? Um, I think I can. So if I talk like this, does it sound yeah, it's any a bit different? Long. Yeah, it's a little bit yeah. South African. Oh, yeah, okay. yeah it's, it's hard for us to say if it's sexy or not because we're not getting the full version of it. I think you're like, it can definitely not be sexy, but yours isn't bad, Valerie. Okay. It's just enough of a tinge to just be, it's like, what's happening It's here? a background note. Yeah, I like it. Yeah. You know, it's something a little different. Uh, District 9, like you referenced before, Liam, that ruined it for me. Not sexy. <laughs> Barbara <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> joins us now in Adelaide. Good evening, Barbara. Good evening, guys. How are we? Doing very good. Good. Yeah, it's sort of... So we play, we're almost playing along just trying to detect the accents as well in the first place. <laughs> I mean, you obviously... You've been in Adelaide for a long time, Barbara? Oh, goodness. I've been in Adelaide for 18 years and I'm nearly breaking even. So I came to Adelaide 18 years ago when I was 21. So nearly breaking even. But sometimes I say hello and people... C- immediately react, where's your accent from? And I'm thinking, for goodness gracious, I only said one word. I've been in this country for 18 years and I still got it. I'm trying to put my finger on it. It's a tricky one, Barbara. It's also like, yeah, it's not just like, oh, that's classically that. Like, are you you, like European? I am. I am from Poland and I'm really sweating right now trying to speak a proper Aussie slang. (laughs) Um, Well, let, let Give me a sec and I'll, I'll try and revert that to my typical Polish. Okay. So I come from um, from Poland. I've been here for 18 years. Hey. And I'm trying to really hard to speak English. Hey. I think it's sexy. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's You're definitely right, sexy. It's, it's sexy. the R's. It's the rolling yeah. of the R's. The Polish accent. Uh, Marlo joins us now. Hello. Hey, how are you doing? Good. It's I don't. I've not picked anyone's off the bat just from the first thing. <laughs> what are you up to tonight, Marlu? Uh, I just came back from the gym, to be honest. Oh. Are you Swedish, Marlu? Oh, close. That's I get. I do get that a lot, but I'm actually quite happy that you can't tell straight away because often it's like straight away. Hey, you're from. Yeah, is it the Netherlands? What? Yes, it is. It's very yeah, sexy. you're Dutch. Yeah. Belle should know yeah, that. Her yeah. family's I Dutch. I should have yeah. known that. I jumped in too soon. I, <laughs> damn it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, the, du- the um, Dutch accent's pretty sexy. I would yeah. say a sexy people as well. I've only spent a little bit of time there, but very tall people and just wonderful complexions. If and- I'm correct in saying this, Malu, uh, het spijt me. Het spijt me? 
you're saying sorry. Yes, I said I'm sorry. I it's too late to <laughs> save it, Bill. You've already offended her <laughs> and your family. You've already offended yeah, you, everybody. You spat on your ancestors, but <laughs> oh. is there anything else? Can you save it with anything else? Or um, Nah. Come on, you you do that <laughs> Duolingo Todd app Zines. every yeah, day. Yeah, Todd Zines, Malu. Todd Zines. Todd Zines. <laughs> Heineken. Okay, you can't just... <laughs> That's great, I, be, I That's went great. to the Heineken factory when I was in Amsterdam, okay? I'm just doing my thing. Did you serve a celebrity? 13, 24, 10. We'd love to hear how the encounter went. Um, this comes off the back of Zachary Quinto, who uh, you would know as Spock if you ever watched Star Trek. Otherwise, you might not know who it is. I don't know the actor, but I know Spock. He's the guy with the skivvy and the bowl cut. Yep. But he's got the weird eyebrows. Yep. Uh, he went to an LA restaurant and they've posted online about how rude he was. This is from their Instagram story from the restaurant. Zachary, you are an amazing Spock, but a terrible customer. You yelled at our staff like an entitled child, made the host of our restaurant cry, and made every single brunch diner extremely uncomfortable. Mr. Zachary, take your bad vibes elsewhere. We have many lovely celebrities join our restaurant, and you are not. One of them. Yeah, and they tagged that. him at the bottom of it as well. <laughs> Brutal. Yeah. Now we're talking about him on Nova. <laughs> yeah. uh, Talia joins us now. Uh, you're in Melbourne. You served a celeb. Was it a pleasant encounter? It was, yeah. I served uh, country music star Troy Cassadaly. Troy Cassadaly. Yeah. I had my choices when I had to go. What did you serve Troy? What was he having? Well, I actually worked at a supermarket as a checkout chick, and he just bought some groceries. Bought oh, some groceries. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, Troy's only human. He's got to go out and get, you know, spinach and that sort of stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, Natalie in Sydney, you served a celeb. Hey, yeah. I was living down in um, Torquay in Victoria for a while, working at the Rip Curl shop, <laughs> and Sarah Jessica Parker came in. Wow! Yeah. Oh, sex in the city. Sarah Jessica yeah. Parker. What was she buying from Rip Curl? Um, she bought a cute little jumper, like a little um, sort of cropped little jumper. And I remember going up and, you know, just doing, like, I was so starstruck, but I was like, I've got to serve her properly. So I'm like, hi, how are you going? Wow. <laughs> then, yeah, it was really, like, very surreal. And then afterwards, I thought, oh, I might get a photo. So I asked her, she had, like, a personal assistant there. And instead of going straight to her, I thought, oh, I'll do the right thing and ask like the personal assistant, you know, yeah. is it all right to have a photo? And they were like, no, she's just here in a, in a private capacity, so she doesn't want any photos. Oh, damn it. You should have come on. Just as she was walking out of the store near the security camera, you should have just gone and like pointed <laughs> up to the ceiling and just put your thumbs up. You would have got a good snap. 13, 24, 10. Got some great prizes up for grabs if you get involved. Did you serve a celeb? Maybe it went good, maybe it went bad. Tanya, uh, tell us who you yes, served. Hello. Um, um, I served Eric Banner. Um, I work as a dental assistant, and he came in for an implant. Oh, right. Like the fancy, whole... like fancy dentist, Tanya? Um, well, it's a prestige Melbourne clinic, um, yeah. Mm-hmm. But he came in just as a regular customer, sat down with everybody else. How was the rest of his, his how was the rest of Eric Banner's teeth? Um, no, and it's really, really good. He's good. got really good teeth. Very good, yeah. Um, yeah what about the dental hygiene? Was the, did he floss? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah wow. <laughs> he was good. <laughs> yeah, pretty cool. Yeah, Very we got cool. to interview him one time. Looked like he had pretty nice teeth. I didn't get close enough to his breath <laughs> to get a good honk, <laughs> to be fair. Uh, Jess, uh, this was your mum they served a celeb. Yeah. Uh, so when my mum was about 16 or 17, she worked at the Hilton Hotel in New Zealand and Rod Stewart came in for a meal and he actually requested specifically that my mum serve him because of the way that my mum looked. She was a very pale, green-eyed Irish redhead. Whoa! Really <laughs> horny Rod! <laughs> Hot Rod! <laughs> <laughs> Did he have his train set with him, Jess? Do you know about that? <laughs> Sorry? Apparently, like, when he tours now, because he's really into his train sets, he, like, has a whole, um, like, he books out a whole root hotel room next to his room and brings his train set, like, everywhere he goes in the world. Yeah, it's a true story. Yeah, he's a gunzel. Loves trains. And Gunzo is someone that loves trains. I feel like you have to explain that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, hey, it's not my uh, job to teach everyone what words are. <laughs> Just look up Gunzel, guys. Hey, uh, Andre in Brizzy, uh, tell us, you served a celeb. 
Serena Williams. Yep. Whoa. Uh, I worked. I worked at uh, Rebel Sport back in the day. Um, it was she was here for the Brisbane International. She was actually injured that year, um, and uh, she yeah probably didn't want to go into the city, so she headed out to Carindale Rebel Sport, and um, yeah took my uh, took the opportunity to serve her, and um, she said yes, and uh, we struggled to find a sports bra her size. Uh, but, um, yeah, it was really nice, uh, meeting her and big woman. Did you get a photo? Uh, I didn't because a couple of the other guys I worked with went to get a photo and she wasn't very impressed. So mm. I thought I'd play it real cool. Yeah. yeah quite super yeah, cool, yeah. man. Um, I would have thought she'd just click her fingers and Nike would just send her a sports bra. Like, you does she really so, need to be yeah. going to Rebel Sport out in the burbs? Yeah. yeah. Although you said back in the day, you know, early days. Yeah. No, well, look, Serena's always been goaded, I reckon. 13, 24, 10. Did you serve a celeb? Jan in Sydney, who'd you serve? So two people that come to mind. One was Keith Urban and the other one, Jennifer Hawkins. Yeah, right. I mean, Keith wasn't hanging out with Jen, was he? Because he's with Nicole. No, 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 not at all. Keith was with his daughter. And, yeah, he was just with his daughters. But Jen was actually unbelievable. She used to come in regularly and have a chat with everybody and be really friendly and just not up herself at all. She was amazing. Jen, where did you work? In Mustman, at a cafe in Mustman. Oh, oh right, lovely. yeah. I'd, just, I'd be loving it if you just had Hungry Jacks or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Orlando, uh, tell us, this was your mum served a celeb? Yeah, she served Nicolas Cage at the airport. Wow. Put the bunny back in the box. Nick yeah. Cage. The ghost rider himself. Uh, what, what was she doing at the airport? Where was she working? Uh, sure, she worked in custom. Right, okay. So, yeah, she, yeah, anyone coming through Australia. Do you remember when this sort of was? Was it a while back? Uh, it was a while ago, like quite a while ago. Yeah, right. Did did did, yeah. did Nick Cage have any contraband in his bag? Uh, I don't think so, no. Yeah, yeah. No. I'm sure he had some nunchucks or something weird <laughs> hidden somewhere. Yeah. He seems like that kind of guy, doesn't he? She could have frisked him. Yeah, potential. Uh, Alex in Brizzy, you served a celeb? Hi, yes, I did. Who was it? Prince Harry. <gasps> Prince Harry. Royalty. It's my fame to fame. Yeah. <laughs> I know. Yeah, and where were you working at the time? <laughs> I was travelling and in England I was working in a restaurant just near the castle and the Eton boys from the Eton College came up for their graduation dinner. Yeah, right, okay. And so do you remember what Harry had? Oh, God, no. I think it was chicken, but he was lovely because we couldn't get to... It was so packed, we couldn't get to everyone to serve them individually, so Harry passed the plates along. Real real missed opportunity there for me to say, what were the eating boys eating? Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yep. That was a missed opportunity. Well, Alex, thank <laughs> you. No, good, Liam. Thank you very much for sharing, Alex. Don't pity me, Bell Jackson. <laughs> <laughs> good on you. Um, we appreciate you getting involved, Alex. Bell, what do you got up your sleeve prize-wise? Prize-wise? Well, uh, Alex, you know what? We'll give you our Frank Green switch lid bottle. Whoa. Whee! You can Thank shop- you. <laughs> That's okay. You can shop Frank Green's new switch lid at frankgreen.com.au. It actually looks really cool. It does look very cool. One bar star man on the radio. I'm really, really fast. Just listen to me go. Yep, that's right. Liam is the one bar star man. Very simple. I've got five songs. I play the very first bar of that song. If you think you know it, you're buzzing with your name. If you get it right, get yourself a point. First of three points wins the game. Now, Talia, if you win tonight, you win a bar of gold. Woo, I'm excited. We have actually had to give one of those away in the past, so um, it is a bit of a worry. Because yep. all I win, really, is just pride. Like, I should win. Yep. You know what I mean? <laughs> yep. But I, I, I claim I'm good at it, Talia. Um, now, make sure you're buzzing with your name, okay, Talia? Okay. All right. Uh, and I've themed it, as I always do, because Eminem has the most listened to song this week. I've right. gone for hip hop. Okay, yeah. Yeah, a bit of a chink in my armour, I'd say. Really? Yeah, so you might be on here, Tali. All right, here we go. <laughs> song number one. I need the name of the song and the artist. Liam, is it the original or is it the hip-hop 
hip hop <laughs> was the theme. Is <laughs> the way that Leo said the hip hop. <laughs> well, yeah, we said it's a hip hop theme. Uh, it's Diana Ross. I'm I'm coming out. Do you know the hip hop version? <laughs> Well, that's what it is, though. But oh, that's all I've been given so far. That's what it is. So you've got to give me half yeah, a point for that. You know, there's a hip hop version, though, right? <laughs> mm-hmm. I suppose someone raps on the top of it, but that's the sample. I'll give you the point unless Talia can give it to me. I right. just thought it was "I'm Coming Out" by Diana Ross. Yeah, of course yeah, you did because I said it in full. <laughs> <laughs> it's Liam's point. I was looking for "Mo Money, Mo Problems," oh, Notorious yeah, B.I.G. It is a bit of a chink in your armour, isn't it? A, it's a chink. That's a big one. That is like a gimme point. Yeah. All right, here we go. Song number two. Buzz in with your name. Liam. Uh, will the real Slim Shady please stand up to me? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm Slim Shady, yes, I'm the real Shady. On you, the Slim Shadies are just the mud. It's just the real Slim yeah. Shady. Yeah, okay, cool. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is a great insight. Oh, dear. All right, Talia, you're going to need this third one to stay in it, okay? Okay. All right. If you know it, buzz in with your name. Clear. Missy Elliott. Mm hmm. Is it work it? Work it? Yeah. Is it work it? Let me work it. I put my thing down, flip it. Tali is on the board. All right. Here we go. Song number four. What? Liam, that is Macklemore oh, Thrift Shop. Yeah, I know my cool hip hop beats. <laughs> Don't you worry. I like my gangster rap, like this one, Thrift Shop. Awesome. Liam, you got the win. Well done. Talia, unfortunately, you got the L, but thanks for playing. Thank you. No worries. Bye. I'm so unsure on all of those. <laughs> you really were. How soft did I come into? <laughs> Will the real Slim Shady Man <laughs> please stand up by M in M? Is it? <laughs> wow. 13, 24, 10. What broke up the friendship? I cannot stop thinking about the call we got last night from a lovely lady called Deirdre who called us and told us about her thief bridesmaids. Three out of four bridesmaids stole my wedding presents on my wedding day. No. What? They didn't. Somebody saw them put it in their car and then they drove home and I never saw them again. So good. Marriage didn't last either. So. Oh, yeah, right. <laughs> It was a very sad call. But at least there was one bridesmaid who didn't steal from Deirdre, I suppose. <laughs> yeah, true. So that, I, I would imagine that made that particular friendship like glue, you know. That's mm. just an unbreakable bond now. That's true. The level of trust in that friendship is mm-hmm. amazing. I think it's it's much more of a female thing than a male thing. Guys, like, you guys don't really have falling outs, do you? No, not as much as I would say females do. Yeah, okay. There's also less of a... A, uh, a maintenance on the upkeep of the friendship, which is kind of a sad thing. You know what I mean? Like, I think about it, like, you know, even with your parents, it's like your mum has, like, tons of friends, but then your dad's like, yeah, I've got good mates. I just speak to them every seven years. Yes, How's everything going? True. Yeah, my parents died. Yeah, anything else going on? No, not really. I'll speak to you in 2039. Yeah. I had um, two girlfriends who had a falling out because... Uh, and this, I'm talking, like, five years ago. One of them was like, I'm going to become an influencer. And then my other mate started copying like the vibe and everything that my other friend was posting online. So if she went somewhere, my friend would go there after, post pretty much the exact same photo. And then I like <laughs> I lost touch with both of them, but they completely cut off ties, which is really sad. That's so funny. It's just so lame. She's like, what, the next night get the same steak and be like, oh, my God. Like, wow. <laughs> it, like, it, literally. That's so obvious. It was like a week apart. And it was it was sad to watch because wow. all us girls that were friends with both of them, you could see it unfolding online because you'd, <laughs> you'd open Insta and be like, oh, there she That's goes. That's amazing. <laughs> That's so good. Uh, Sophie joins us from Adelaide. What ruined the friendship? I feel like this is a really contentious subject for everybody, not just friends. Mm -hmm. But my housemate and I used to go down to Coles and get some dairy milk chocolate, you know, treat yourself. Mm -hmm. Um, I would leave mine in the pantry and eat it at room temperature. She would put hers in the fridge. And then when we would eat it on the lounge together, she would just be crunching and gnawing at this hard block of chocolate like a little rabbit. And it was just (laughs) sensory overload, like just the Scraping of her teeth on this hard chocolate. Just I, I, I moved out. I moved out. Yeah, wow. right. So that was an. I do. I get what you mean because when like, they have to sort of like start like, like sucking on the corner to try and melt it a little bit to like chip pieces away. It's bad. It's like it's a pantry thing. It's a pantry thing for sure. <laughs> Thanks so much, Sophie. Thirteen twenty four ten. What broke up the friendship? Our favourite caller will walk away with a brand new Frank Green switch pit lid bottle. Yep. So thirteen twenty four ten. Give us a buzz, Eva in Sydney. What ruined yours? 
Well, um, we, me and my friend have the kids similar age. So when I bought my friend's kids a birthday gift, she got back to me after a few days saying, well, I got your kids a gift of value, this and this. So there's a shortfall of $50. Whoa! I just could not believe it. It's really heartbreaking because we were really good friends and our kids really loved the relationship with yeah, her kids. Of so we still see each other but just that relationship it's completely broken and it's I'm still heartbroken. It took me actually months to recover from yeah, that. Yeah, that's so cheap. What a scab. Oh, so cheap. It's like, oh no, yeah, and no, I've just gone on the uh the Toys R Us website. That's defunct that store, isn't it? Uh, yeah. You know they still operate online. There you go. I yep. could have gotten away with it. <laughs> <laughs> Eva, great story. Thank you very much. Keep these coming. 13, 24, 10. Olivia joins us from Sydney. Go for it. Hey, so it started off like we were best friends like immediately and then she kind of just became like top six. So I was like, I need to take a step away, that sort of stuff. But she was still like showing up at my house while I was at work and I'd come home and she'd like be in my shower and stuff and just like, what? surprise. Yeah, what? like crazy. So, and then I was like, look, this is enough. I need my key back. She's like, no, I've lost it. But then she'd still turn up at my house at like midnight and be knocking on my door, saying creepy things to me, saying she's coming in my house and patting my cat. And I was like, what? nah. Yeah, it ended up with me having to go make a police report and getting like cameras installed in my like at the front of my house and stuff. Whoa. Sounds like you had a bit of a baby reindeer situation going on there. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, just someone just in your shower when you're rocking up. Wow. Uh, Marie, uh, tell us what ruined the friendship. Uh, COVID ruined our friendship. So um, I'm a nurse in Melbourne and she lived in um, Queensland and um, kept telling me it was all a conspiracy theory and it was all make-believe. And, of course, you know, I'm going to work every day and getting redeployed to ICU and, you know, um, it was very real for me. Yeah, yeah, that that would be really tough for you, Marie. And mm. I guess that and that was very telling of that time. You really, all those people came out of the woods during COVID, and you could just go, okay, we're we're not friends. Uh, Samantha joins us now. What ruined your friendship? I got into a relationship, and that ruined the friendship. Oh, how so? I was a male female best friend. We would do everything together. We were always together. And when I got into a relationship with my now partner. He just flipped and he was all offended and I think in his head we were together. Oh, that yeah, one. right. So he was, he, was, he was looking for a bit more there, Sam. I guess so, but I don't think I could have been uh, any clearer that it wasn't going to happen because I am in a same-sex relationship now and <laughs> was pretty open with him about that. Oh, right. I get you. I get you. Right. So he was just hanging on for dear life, just trying to just hoping for the best, I suppose. Never yeah. really stood a chance. No, not yeah. at all. Oh. Yeah. Uh, Samantha, do you want to get yourself some tickets to the movies? I'd love that. Yeah, you want to go see The Watchers in cinemas June 6th? Sounds great. <laughs> oh, no worries. It doesn't sound like you really wanted to go. Yeah. Thanks, Sam. For more great comedy shows like this, head to novapodcasts.com.au.